Hey, what is up, phone dogs? Bo HD here, and this is the Sonom XP6. It's basically a smartphone designed to take a beating. If you head over to their website, it says that this device can withstand a lot of pressure, some extreme temperatures, along with being able to withstand all sorts of drops and scratches. Now, I was sent this device by AT&T to basically test its durability for you guys, so big shout out to AT&T for hooking me up with this device. Uh, I'm basically going to test its durability by running it through a variety of different tests. It's not going to be the most scientific um, durability test out there, but uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I'll just say that. My goal is just to sort of give you guys some insight as to how well this device holds up against all sorts of different harsh environments. Um, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and uh, let's see how durable the Sonom XP6 is here on PhoneDog. All right, now if we take an up-close look at the Sodom XP6, we'll see that it does indeed feature a very rugged and tough build construction with that rubberized shell you see here. There's a touchscreen on the front that features Corning Gorilla Glass 3 as well as a number pad below that, and this device does actually run Android 4.4 KitKat, so it's a fully functional Android smartphone. It just doesn't look like the typical smartphone we see today since it's made for people who work in harsh environments. Now the first test I conducted was a couple simple scratch tests. I wanted to start simple and work my way up. So I put my phone in my pocket as well as some metal coins and my keys and then I just shook it around. And as awkward as it looks, it's actually a pretty accurate way to test and see if this device does pick up scratches since you know most people carry their phone in their pocket along with keys and maybe some loose change. And after shaking it around for a good amount of time I pulled it out and there was nothing. No scratches on the screen itself, and no scratches on the rubberized shell. It was pretty much what I expected, to be honest. I wanted to ramp it up though, so I went outside and began conducting more tests. I took my keys and pressed it up against the back cover, and scraped them back and forth as hard as I could, and it scuffed up the back pretty good as you can see here. There are definitely some marks, but they were able to be buffed out no problem. And I did the same for the display portion of the device. I scraped my keys on the screen as hard as I could, and once again, there were no marks. I wasn't able to actually make any permanent marks, so it passed that test no problem. Now, before I decided to go crazy with the smash tests, I wanted to test its claim against water. It's IP68 certified, meaning it can be submerged up to two meters for 30 minutes. I didn't have a pool, but I literally soaked it in water by spraying it with a hose, as you can see here, and it still works with no problems whatsoever. Then I decided, okay, well, I'm gonna go drop test it outside. The first couple of tests, I just dropped it from pocket height since that's really the sweet spot people usually drop their phone when pulling it out or putting it in their pocket. And so the first test, I dropped it face up first, and it hit the pavement pretty hard, it made some minor scuffs, if that, it really didn't do that much at all. And so I decided to drop it face down with the screen facing down, which is, you know, the most dangerous position. And once again, it didn't really show any signs of damage, I mean it still functioned completely fine. So then I decided to step it up a little bit more and chuck it about 30 feet. I went to a local park and decided to chuck it from a slide onto some concrete about 30 feet away. Yeah, I told you it wasn't going to be very scientific, but I did this a couple times and each time it hit the ground pretty hard and bounced a few times. There were definitely some minor marks around the sides and back of the device as you can see here, but the display is completely fine. And as if that wasn't enough, I decided to throw it down a street. Now, after talking to some people who work in the construction industry, apparently they throw their phones when they get upset, so that's exactly what I did. Now, I didn't get the best camera angle of it bouncing down the pavement, but I did get some close-up shots after the fact that showed some scuffed up edges. It was more extreme than the previous throw, but still not enough to decommission this device. Now, the Sonom XP6 is resistant to extreme pressure, so I decided to run over it in my car. Not once, but twice, with both the front and back wheels, as you can see here. I even ran over it with the display facing upwards, but once again, nothing really happened at all. So for the last test, I decided to freeze the Sonom XP6, but not by itself. No, that would be boring. Instead, I decided to freeze it in a container of water. It took about 24 hours to freeze, but it did freeze solid, and so I started to chip away at it to get to the frozen center. Now, I mentioned before that this device is IP68 certified, meaning it is waterproof up to 2 meters for 30 minutes, and it can withstand extreme temperatures up to negative 20 degrees Celsius, or negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but it doesn't mention it being able to withstand of being frozen into a block of ice. And as you can see here, it looks like the entire display inside the phone is frozen. And I don't know if some water was able to get into the device or not. I did notice some small bubbles rising from the device when I initially poured the water into the container, but this device is frozen solid. Even the buttons are frozen to the point where I can't even power this device on. Granted, it was on when I first froze it, but the water definitely got in somehow and the device most definitely is not turning on. So there you have it guys, the Sonom XP6 is really a beast of a phone in terms of what it can withstand in all sorts of different harsh environments and uh, all sorts of different torture tests. Um, I'm going to basically try and resurrect this phone. As you can see from the last um, test that I did, it's pretty much dead and you can kind of see here that it's full of water and it's still kind of wet on the back here. So um, hopefully I can dry it out. I have faith that I can dry it out and resurrect this phone, although uh, the phone was on when I uh, dropped it in water and froze it. So hopefully it didn't short circuit or anything, but uh, give me about a week or two and I will report back to you as to whether or not this phone is alive. What I'll actually do for you guys is I will leave an annotation right here. So if this phone does turn back on, you guys will know through annotation. I'll also update the description bar so that uh, you guys can take a look down there and see if it does in fact turn on in about a week or two. Um, also, I will make a full review if this guy does turn on. Um, I'll compare its display, its performance, and just all around design since it's kind of an unusual phone, although it is a modern smartphone running Android 4.4 KitKat. So definitely make sure you subscribe here so you can see that video when and if it goes live. And if you don't wanna wait, you can just head over to AT&T right now and you can purchase the Sonom XP6 for about $17.50 a month for 30 months through AT&T Next, or you can buy it outright for $524.99 off contract. So thanks again to AT&T for sending me this device to torture and share with you guys. Um, if you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. It's kind of an unusual video here on Phone Dog, but if you guys like it, Possibly I might do more, although I cringe every time I put a perfectly good smartphone in harm's way, but it was definitely fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, as always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.